uh, I don't see a uh, systemic order in which UBI works. So I, I think that if you want to introduce UBI, you ought to pr produce a, a simulation of uh, the economic environment in which the UBI is sustainable. I think that UBI is the attempt to perpetuate a system under changed conditions. At the moment, uh, wages, salary is the way that we allocate resources to individuals. Right? And they are also a way in which we evaluate the value of the contribution of the individual to society. And uh, they are a way to discipline individuals and a way to integrate individuals into teams and groups, into society as a whole, and measure the value of their contribution. And as soon as you automate things and globalize and outsource, uh, this falls apart. And this is what we witnessed to some degree. It, it never worked perfectly well, but now it works less than ever because we have more productivity than ever and people don't live better than ever. And so how do we deal with that? And uh, so the idea is we give people salaries, but they are independent of uh, what they contribute to society and independent of productivity. And uh, this is probably- It sounds like great for it. artists. Yes, of course because artists are largely not going to change what they do. So uh, in some sense, if you give an artist a salary, they are still going to do their art because they are intrinsically motivated. And uh, it's very difficult to force an artist to not do art. At least the artist will suffer a lot. And uh, the artist will typically play along with society. Uh, arguably a society that consists entirely of artists will not work very well because uh, many of the other things will be left undone. Right? And a lot of society requires that people do things despite not wanting to do them. Uh, people that collect the garbage probably need to be paid very well and they deserve to be paid very well because nobody wants to do this voluntarily. Unless it's your own garbage and nobody else does it, then of course somebody will eventually need to do it. So uh, how can we perform this allocation of resources? How can we make sure that the garbage gets collected? Uh, and how can we make sure that uh, people uh, have skin in the game in our larger enterprises in a system where we have UBI? So I suspect that something like a citizen income where you uh, have community-based income and communities decide uh, what kind of labor you perform. And this uh, money can be given out as stipends, for instance, if you want to write a book and the community says, yes, sure, write this book. It's a useful thing to do. Uh, right, uh, but, but we still have a way to allocate people into nursing jobs or into social interaction or into community management or into education. I think that would be a good thing to have. I see a big danger in the particularization of society if people no longer feel as part of a greater whole and just see that society is that thing that feeds me, but it's something that I don't need to put things back into. And. Uh, to uh, think that UBI uh, is going to magically achieve this because people have an intrinsic need of doing that is probably not going to work out because there is, if there is no force ultimately for doing that over multiple generations, there's going to be drift. If there's and no force to make you contribute to the whole of society? Yes, you mean? then eventually people uh, will stop contributing to society because of the drift. Uh, our opinions are not intrinsically moral. There is no intrinsically moral power in the universe. It's ecological. If an opinion is possible or if a behavior is possible, it will exist. If it's incentivized, it will be abundant. And if it's not helpful, it doesn't matter. It will still be abundant. It will just mean that the system breaks down. And so uh, I like the idea of UBI, but in some sense, uh, the artists in Eastern Germany and so on did have UBI and uh, we basically had the right to work, but we were not really forced to work in Eastern Germany. And as a result, we went bankrupt. Our society went bankrupt. Like literally. And the houses that we lived in, they still had the pockmarks of the last war because in 40 years, we were not able to get enough resources to fix the houses, even in our capital, Berlin. And it's ridiculous. We uh, always had a shortage of labor, for instance. Uh, the West had an enormous surplus of labor and often didn't know how to get people into gainful employment because the productivity grew, but the pop population didn't shrink. And there was still labor competition, so working hours didn't shrink. And as a result, uh, a growing number of people got unemployed because we were unable to allocate labor in an efficient way in, in the West. And in the East, people be just uh, absorbed uh, the productivity by being unproductive. And to some degree, this also happens in the US, right? The healthcare system is uh, the most expensive healthcare system in the world. And it's largely because most of it consists from an unproductive things in documenting transactions. 
And most of the things that people do in the US is arguably documentation of transactions. It's the biggest part of employment, apparently. And so people work very hard, very long hours, and they still live in houses made from Tyvek and plywood, have bad water, and have healthcare that makes them bankrupt. And uh, so the big question would be, how can we change this? How can we implement uh, an architecture of systemic incentives? And I think that uh, UBI is not part of systemic thinking. It's only dealing with a single symptom at a single level. And this is not the right way to comprehend society. You need to zoom out and understand the superorganism.